So, a good question. Amy asks if I meant the noun or the verb form. Uh, it's a really good question, I guess. Noun is what I assume most people would think. So let's start talking about the noun form. What is a factor? A thing, a factor. It's a thing, what is it? Mm -hmm. It's a number. That can be multiplied. That can be multiplied to make some other number. Excellent. Okay, so those may seem like that yeah, great, but we just happen to say just the right stuff to define a factor. Here's a really common um, definition of a factor. A number that goes into another number. If that's how you define factor, stop that. Because goes into, what does that mean? Goes into. You don't put numbers into other numbers. Like that's not a mathematical operation. We do multiply numbers together, so that's very specific. Okay? So a factor, a number in the, in the set of numbers, uh, a number, whoa, not too good start. A number, how do we say it? A number. That, let's just say that multiplies, just so I don't have to as much. By another number, multiplies a, another number. To make a number. To make a number. Okay. Well, that's kind of confusing, right? A number that multiplies by a number to make a number. Okay. Uh, let's reword it a little bit. And how many different numbers are we talking about here? Two. How many numbers are being referenced in this definition? Three. Three different numbers. So we should give them all names, so it's easier to follow. Let's say uh, quite a bit. Let's say if m. Okay, so we'll just call M a number. M represents a number. Is that all right? Of course it is. We've been Happy Friday. Today's announcement for December 6th. Today's the D-Day. Okay, so instead of all that number multiplies a number to make a number very arbitrary, now we're specifically saying if M, some number, multiplies N, well, I use something other than M, which signifies that N is probably a different number. It could be the same. M could be the same as N. Uh, but that'd just be coincidental. So M multiplies by some other number to make k, okay, so there's a rest of this statement. Uh, if n multiplies n to make k, then what can we say? And go down more factors. Perfect. Then m is a factor of k. So, uh, Dakota walked in here and he said, well, we've said this. He saw the screen for this. He said, we've, we've said this like 20 times. I hope I remember it. it seems like he did. We have said this like 20, 20 times. Now it's 21 times. So what a factor is is very important. Um, and when I say factor, I multiply this thing by another thing to get the thing, that should come up in your head. Right away, that should pop up in your head. Okay? Just like when you think of a unicorn, if I say unicorn immediately, a horse with a horn, you know exactly what a unicorn means, right? Unless it's, it has a much deeper meaning to you. <laughs> um, so the definition, don't think it goes into, think specifically, well, is m a factor of k? Well, if m multiplies by some other number to get k, then yes, it is a factor of k. What else is a factor of k, by the way? n is also a factor of k. Okay, but since m is the one that we mentioned, it's because the, the, the implied question here is that somebody asked you before you said the statement, is m a factor of k? Well, let me tell you, if m multiplies n to make k, then yes, m is a factor of k. Okay. <coughs> um, you know what we can do? We take this definition, copy it, verbatim, word for word, 
change it to blue. And now it applies to a polynomial. Whether we're talking about numbers or we're talking about polynomials, the definition is the same. Okay? Now m doesn't represent a number. It did here, but now it represents what? A polynomial. And if the polynomial m multiplies the polynomial n to make the polynomial k, then m is a factor of k. But the polynomial m is a factor of the polynomial k. Okay? Factor means the same thing in numbers and in polynomials. Um, Let's give a couple of examples here. I think that really helps to have examples. Move this out of the way a bit. So in numbers, let's give a factor, or I give an example of a factor in numbers. Example. Uh, uh, three is a factor of Nine. So it's not fifteen. Three factor of nine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be multiplied by a different number? It doesn't have to be different, it just has to be another number. I said before M and N could be the same. It would just be a kind of a coincidence. Yeah, There's only one factor. Like yeah, it is a factor of nine, but because in that case M and N are the same, we're gonna choose a different one. Just so that the example is pretty clear. So fifteen? Fifteen. So it's a factor of fifteen. Okay. Now, why do you know that? What's the proof that 3 is a factor of 15? 3 times 5 is 15. Here's a little math symbol for you. I know you're really hoping you could add to your knowledge of math symbols. That symbol right there, that's an upside down triangle with dots, is there for No, that would be a right side up triangle. That'd be there for Well, what word would you use there if you were saying the sentence? Three is a factor of 15. Um, What's that? Then. then this is our justification for that thing. This is like the proof because. Because. That would be a good word to use. Because. And that is the word you can use. It is the word that it means. Because. Now, if we wrote it the other way, just to go off of what Dakota said, three times five equals 15, therefore, Three is a factor of fifteen. You can do it that way, and then we use the triangle the other way. We just turn it right side up. Just a little tidbit. Now we'll talk about polynomials. Example. Well, now this becomes a little tricky. I'm going to ask you to come up with an example. I'm going to see: Is this taking root in your brain? Are you getting this? Okay, uh, you get to ask yourself the same thing. So you can see the example we used in numbers. We came up with a number, and we said it's a factor of this other number. Why? Because that number, 3, multiplies by some other number, 2, 15. So now do the same thing if you can. If you, if you can't, it's okay. Give it your best try, though. Think about it. Give it some thought. Um, can you think polynomial is a factor of another polynomial because polynomial times polynomial equals polynomial? Right? You did it with numbers, now try it with polynomials. First, to do this example, we have to come up with the, the first thing, the thing that's a factor of another thing, and it needs to be a polynomial. Can you come up with a, a polynomial that could be possibly a factor of some other polynomial? Try and keep it simple. A simple polynomial. Two x cubed plus two x. Two x cubed. Plus 2x. That's a polynomial. Is a factor of Jared's factor of. Okay. Well, he did more than anybody else. Came up with a polynomial. That's good. 
it's a little bit harder, right, with, with polynomials and numbers, because with numbers, we know the multiples of five, right, or the multiples of three, excuse me, and if we know the multiples of three, we know the numbers of three is a factor of, those are synonymous. Um, but to figure out what this is a factor of, it's not as readily accessible in our brains, we don't just know uh, a bunch of polynomials that you can multiply, uh, that you can use this to multiply and get whatever that is. So how are we going to find what it's a factor of? Just as a hint, we could have chosen any multiple of 3, right? 15, 1, 9, anything. Okay? There's an infinite supply of numbers that 3 is a factor of. So it's not like there's only one polynomial that we can pick here. We just need a polynomial that what? That what? Is it, yeah, it's a multiple of this polynomial. Or that this, mul this polynomial can multiply to get a polynomial. So if we want to get a polynomial that's a factor of, all we really need to do is going to kind of reverse engineer this. 2x cubed plus 2x multiplied by something else, some other polynomial. Okay, so what's another polynomial? Keep in mind, you're going to have to multiply these together. X plus two, real simple polynomial. Now we got two x cubed plus two x times x plus two, so we're gonna have to multiply this together. Help us out, do it uh, as in the smallest space as possible. We got two x cubed times x. That's gonna be our biggest exponent. So we multiply the two biggest exponents in each parentheses together. We get two x to the fourth. Okay, can we get a 2x to the, or an x to the third? We got 2x to the third times two, give us 4x to the third. Uh, then we got an x squared, we got 2x squared, plus 4x. Well, we multiply those together and we got this, so 2x cubed plus 2x is a factor of 2x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x. So we'll read it all the way through. 2x cubed plus 2x is a factor of that thing because 2x cubed plus 2x times x plus 2 is that big long polynomial. We multiply two polynomials together. We uh, know that they're factors of the result in front of it. So I set it up this way. I made sure that we defined it this way. Because think of it this way. If, if we were to define a factor as a number that goes into another number, when it comes to polynomials, it becomes even more difficult to understand what goes into means. Right? 2x cubed plus 2x goes into this. Okay? It's too arbitrary. We have to define it better. Okay. 2x cubed plus 2x multiplies by another polynomial to get this. That's why it's a factor of that other thing. All right? Any questions? Comments? That reminds me of like a bag of cookies you get it from a vending machine. If you look on the back, it says questions or comments. Like, let's call it these numbers. They were good. Goodbye. Okay, so two factor, right? The verb form, like Amy asked, what's the verb for, or, you know, what am I talking about, the noun and the verb? So we just talked about the noun, so now the verb form is actually two factor a number, two factor a polynomial, means that you're gonna do something. So a number, what does it mean to factor a number? You got a number? You're gonna factor it. What does it mean you're gonna do? What's that? Well, it does kind of mean you're gonna divide, sort of. But with division, you have a number, and I tell you the number you're gonna divide by, right? So like, there's two things that you know at the beginning, but when you factor, I just tell you 35. That number 35. Factor. 
I'm not saying divide it by five, I'm saying take 35 and factor it. So what do you even do when you take 35 and you factor it? Are you finding the factors of that number? Finding the factors and factors are numbers that? Multiply them. Multiply together. So we're gonna take the number and we're gonna write that number. Uh, so you to write uh, a number as the product of two numbers. Example, 35 factors to five times seven. Quick note though, like 36. Can you factor 36? What's that? Six times six, okay. Six times six. Did we factor 36? Yeah. Yes, we did. No. We did. But did we fully factor it? No. No, we didn't fully factor it. Uh, so if we fully factor it, now we'll factor six and six and Write those, two times three, times two, times three, and now we're done because what? All prime numbers, yeah, and that is gonna to apply to polynomials as well. There are prime polynomials too. Except for in polynomials, we call it irreducible instead of prime, depending on who you talk, talk to, I guess. Uh, another color. Well, polynomials get is, we've seen, very similar to numbers. In fact, polynomials represent numbers. All you need to do is plug a number in for x, and this polynomial will be a number, right? <coughs> so, uh, we'll just copy this, uh, this definition, and instead of number, we'll say polynomial. To write a polynomial as the product of two polynomials. Example, I'm gonna give you a, kind of a simple polynomial that I want you to uh, factor, which means write as the product of two polynomials. And you should be able to do this because we've done this lots of times, but We've done this lots of times. This is a special kind of polynomial, it's a specific kind of polynomial. What's the name of this kind of polynomial? It's a degree two, right? And, and degree two has a special name. Got a whole chapter on these. Trinomial. The trinomial. It's got three terms, but huh? Uh, well, its graph makes a parabola. That's true. <laughs> quadratic factors in this way and that's it there is no other way that this polynomial factors it's fully factored it's factored down to its prime prime factors factors that can't be factored anymore just like this one was 
And just like numbers, there's a unique factorization. There's no other way to write this factorization as a factor of, as a as a product of primes. And the same is true of polynomials. There's no other way to write this as a as a product of primes. Sometimes we'll need to do a few levels of factoring to get it all the way down to its fully factored form. Okay. Um, but once we get there, that'll be the only way that it can be done. Okay. Um, going to be factory polynomials all day long today and uh, looking at different kinds of patterns and that kind of stuff. All right? uh, so I'm just going to add one layer onto this kind of a polynomial and see how we do. Back to this polynomial, I want you to write it as the product of polynomials. Okay. You could use a little bit of a push in the right direction. Um, this is kind of a, a toughie. It's not as simple as this one. It's definitely possible. It's just definitely a challenge. One thing that you should look for uh, in every case before you start doing this kind of factor when you break it into different parentheses is look at all the terms. Let's see if you can find anything in common among all those terms. Do you see anything that they all have in common? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All have a factor of x. And what else do they have in common? A two, a factor of two. So if, you, if we take out that factor of 2, if we factor it out, by the way, 2x is a polynomial. <clears throat> so if here's a polynomial, and it's going to be multiplied by another polynomial, so it's the product of two polynomials. So this will be x squared minus 2x minus 8. Now we're going to look at this polynomial and say, could we factor that polynomial? 2x times another factor times another factor. distribute these this stuff into that stuff, then we get that stuff, and we distribute this into that stuff, and we'll get this stuff, right? So get it, it's factor. It is the product of prime polynomials. You can't factor this anymore. You can't multiply two polynomials, get x plus two, unless we count multiplying one times x plus two. Right? Like you couldn't have two parentheses with an x in them, with each having an x and multiply those together, because then you get an x squared. Down to a first degree uh, polynomial, so it's definitely all the way done. How many factors did we get? Three. We got a factor, factor, and this is a factor. A factor is defined by, uh, as a thing that's multiplied by another thing, so there's three of them. And if we multiply this factor with an x in it, by this factor with an x in it, get the, the result of that, what will be the degree of that? be a second degree when we multiply these together. Okay, so we take that second degree and we multiply it by this guy, this first degree, what degree will that result be? Three, and then okay, that's a degree three. So how many factors do you think you can have with a degree three? Do you think you can have any more than that? You have four factors, multiply them together, and then get a third degree. Assuming 
assuming that all four of those factors are factors with an X in them. Uh, no, this factor with an X times this one will give you a, a degree two, then you bring this one in, that's a degree three, bring this other one in, then the degree four. So at most, if we have a degree three, we can get three factors. Three, four, four factors. Three, five, five factors. And I think you get the idea. So this first thing that we did right here is called factoring out a monomial, a common monomial, a common one term that they all share. They all share the factor. So always keep that in mind as you begin factoring a polynomial to uh, look for any common monomials that you can factor out. It certainly makes your life easier. And if you're going to fully factor it, you have to do that at some point. You might as well do it at the beginning and make the rest of the process a lot easier. All right. So 5.4. Working out some examples for 5x cubed times x will be 5x to the fourth, but then have I fill in the rest of it so it comes out just right? Uh, no, kind of a, a tricky, tricky problem here. Uh, so to help you with that, I'm suggesting you try this other one. It's very similar to that one. Just factor this. See if you can factor this, and then uh, if you can, then we'll look at the similarities between this thing and that thing. tell if it's correct, right? Let's write it down. Well, yeah, it's, well, the code is kind of jumped again here. What? He's made the conclusion that I wanted to make already. So let's, let's use M. Was that a minus one? Uh, story of a man who 
lost his mind. Or was it stuck? Was it the bad? last problem? Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Probably. Bertrand Russell. He actually went crazy over that. That's the story. Yeah, he went. He, I wish I could try that hard or something. He, he, he uh, well, he worked really hard, really, really hard on this thing called set theory. Okay, and then supposedly what happened was he published his work, and then somebody found a mistake, like a paradox in his work, and then uh, you know the story goes. It's not really 100% true. He did spend time in a mental institution, died in a mental institution, but not necessarily because of this. But uh, you're gonna put me in a mental. The, <laughs> so, uh, so the story goes that he he was like tried to to uh, resolve this paradox, and not being able to resolve it was uh, he drove him crazy. So, um, do you want to hear a version of the paradox? Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I do. Okay, it's called Russell's paradox, and. Uh, this is a version of it. Now, the, the actual paradox is let x be a set of all sets. Does x contain itself? It's kind of hard. So here's a version of it. There's a town with a barber. Okay. So here's what the barber does. He shaves. He shaves people's faces, men's faces. <laughs> and uh, he shaves all the men's faces, the faces of the men who don't shave their own faces. Okay, so clear. I'm not shaving right now, right? so he would shave me because I'm not, I'm not convinced I want it, right? If I don't shave myself, I go to the barber. He, he shaves me. Here's the question, and here's the paradox: Who, who should shave him? the barber? Why is that math? Math is sex. Who should shave the barber? Yeah, get another barber. Okay. He's the barber, okay? No matter what you do, no one like we can't figure out who should shave the barber. Okay, so if the barber listen, if the barber shaves the barber himself, mm -hmm. then he is in a set of people who shave themselves and therefore should not be shaved by the barber. Right? Oh, okay. If Bob the plumber, Bob the plumber, if he shaves his own face, he should not go to the barber to get shaved, right? If Bob the plumber does not shave his face, he should go to the, 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 the barber to get his face shaved. But the barber himself, if he shaves his own face, well, he's like Bob the plumber, he shaves his own face. What do people who shave their own face do? They don't go to the barber. But if the barber shaves himself, then he shouldn't shave himself. Okay, wait, wait, okay, so he doesn't, he doesn't shave himself, so he just, he, forget that. He just doesn't shave he himself. He just has a beard. He just has a beard. But wait, people who don't shave themselves are supposed to do what? Go to the barber to be shaved. But then if he does go to the barber himself and shave, then he's somebody who shaves himself and then shouldn't go to the barber. See, it's a paradox. He's okay. a different barber. Okay, he goes to a bar he goes to a different barber, so he's someone who doesn't shave himself. Who shaves the people who don't shave themselves? The original barber. So he should really go to himself. <laughs> No Even way. if you went to a different barber, you'd be somebody who doesn't shave himself and doesn't shave himself. Can we do another one? No, what if the people that do shave themselves don't shave the barber? Because then uh, technically. People who do barber. shave themselves, what? People who do shave themselves should help the barber and shave him. That's a really weird conversation. But then the, 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 the definition of people who go to the barber are people who do not shave their own faces. But technically, they are going to the barber. Barbers what if they do it like on the street? Yeah. Like a like a underground barber. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's. Uh, that whole thing got recorded. Now let's go back to this. Okay. So don't don't freak out too much. Don't don't die in a mental institution because this is difficult. It's it's figure outable. Okay. Let's. Let's go back to how Dakota may have come up with this factorization. First, here's a good starting point. 5m times m is pretty much the only way that you can do this, right? <coughs> the only logical way. We can do weird stuff. We don't do weird stuff. We do normal stuff. m times m is the only way to get m squared, right? And the only way to get 5 when you multiply 5 prime, so you have to do 5 times 1. Okay, so that part's settled. 
All right. And now we need to multiply two numbers together to get number negative 36. Mm -hmm. A few ways to do that so that there is some time that could go into this problem. Um, so at that point, it comes a little bit of guess and check. But the 5m and the m, those are for sure. So that's good. Uh, and then we just kind of we, we, we plug in possibilities for getting negative 36 and hope that we get negative 24m. Right? And after trying, uh, what's the way to get 36? 12, right? And negative 3, well, that's 12m. And this is negative 15m. That doesn't give us negative 24m. And darn it. OK, so maybe we'll switch the 12 and the 3. There's a 12, there's a 3. You get 3m minus uh, the 60. Minus 60m. Well, that's not going to add up to negative 24m. So it is some some guess and check, unless okay. Now hold on before before I tell you the unless. Let's jump over to this blue thing over here. Okay. We know from Dakota's <coughs> fine polynomial craftsmanship that it is six and negative six. Okay. And it does have to be a positive six in the parentheses with 5m and a negative six over here. Otherwise. We wouldn't get the negative 30 we need, that big old negative 30 to bring the sum to negative 24. All right. So because this has a degree of 2, we call it a what? Second degree. Second degree, which has a special name. Because we looked up quadratic. earlier. Quadratic. It's a quadratic. OK. Degree 2s are quadratics. Is this a quadratic? No, no it's not. It's not a quadratic. But it's like a quadratic. OK. Here's how it's like a quadratic. If instead of m, I put x squared, and instead of m, I put x squared, well, instead of m, if I have x squared, then I'll have negative 24 x squared like this. If I take x squared and I square it, what's x squared squared? Four to the fourth, x to the fourth, OK? So this is like a quadratic in that if you take this guy right here, whatever you see right here, and you square it, you get this guy right here. Just the variable part, not the number part. If you square this, you get this. If you square x squared, you get x to the fourth. Okay, so if you have three terms like this, and you can square this to get this, and this is a constant at the end, then you've got something that's in quadratic form. It's like a quadratic. A quadratic is strictly a degree two, but this is like a quadratic. It's a quadratic form. So this could factor just like that. 5x squared instead of 5 times m plus 6 times x squared instead of m minus 6. How? How? Where'd you get m? I made it up. I used m instead of x squared so that you can see it as a quadratic. It's a simpler way, like Dakota is saying, it's a simpler way to look at that polynomial. Okay. It is something squared, and, and this, this is like the non-squared version of that thing. This is x squared squared, and this is x squared squared. Okay. It's just x squared, but it's, it's not itself squared. Okay. That's the way quadratics work. You have a constant. You have a coefficient and a variable, and a coefficient and that same variable, but squared. Well, that's what this is like. A constant, a variable, and that variable squared. So it's like a quadratic, it's a quadratic form. And just like we can factor this as 5m plus 6 times m minus 6, we can factor this as 5x squared plus 6 times x squared minus 6. If we replace m's with x squareds, we have the blue. We have the polynomial in blue. Okay, can we get that n and x squared? I guess. I guess. Another example. Yeah, let's maybe do another example. Okay. Uh, so here's another example. Um, simpler example. Um, x to the 6 is a Facebook update. 
Um, x squared plus um, Did you say x squared or x squared or x Sorry, x to the third. 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 Six. Six. <laughs> I st stop talking to me. Uh, but it's in quadratic form, it can be factored a lot like quadratic. So, so all quadratics, uh, at, at their biggest, they'll be three terms long. Right? You got a coefficient times a x squared, you got a coefficient times just an x, and then a constant. Okay? And that's the most that you possibly have in a quadratic. But this has three terms. Now, not all things that have three terms are in quadratic form, but here's how you know it's in quadratic form. If I go to start factoring it, and I can take this middle one, right, if I write it in, in descending order of powers, I can write x cubed and x cubed, like this thing right here. And then I multiply these together and it gives me the power of this x. Maybe I'll have to mess around with the coefficients a little bit. Uh, not in this case, but maybe I will. Like in this case, we had to have different coefficients. But uh, I can multiply an x cubed times an x cubed and get an x to the sixth. So that is quadratic form. If I can square this thing and get this, this x to that power then it's a quadratic form. So can I fill this in so that I get a 30 and then when I add together, I get 11? Six and five. Six and five. Uh, what can you do five and six? So, I mean, they're, yeah. It's, well, that's about the, no difference. So uh, here, let's use the same coefficients and the same constant, and uh, like, what could I put here and here? Not to the sixth and to the third, but use different powers. Not not to the power of six and the power of three, and, and not the power of four and the power of two. Come up with a different example. Eight x to the eighth and x to the fourth. Next to the Isn't there like a pattern? Right. Yeah. Can you just well, this power needs to be twice this twice power. as big. Twice as big. Double. So, so it could be 32 and 16. Uh, yeah. It could be 32 and 16. That would be quadratic. Uh, quadratic four. So this would be x to the fourth plus six times x to the fourth plus five. And if we multiply it out, we would get that guy right there. Because we have spent a lot of time in this, which is fine, I'm just going to have to shorten up what I was going to say before. Keep in mind that when we have a quadratic like this that has, like all this guessing and checking takes a long time, especially because there's a, a coefficient out in front that's not a 1. Do you remember what we used to do that? 
We've, we've factored quadratics before. We've had quadratics that have a non one coefficient out in front and a coefficient other than one. And they taught you this special method. You sound like vaguely familiar? Huh? Something like that. Yeah, we drew this little X. And we did A, C up here and B down here. If you don't remember that, you're going to have to go back and remind yourself. Because you, you've done it, you've been tested on it, like you should know it and be able to be reminded of it. I have videos about it, we have a lecture video about it, tutorial videos, you have your notes, so all that stuff should, should help you out. So if you want to use the AC method on that, uh, you could also use the AC method on that. Same exact thing, only we just recognize that this is x squared and that's x squared instead of x and x. So, so far we have quadratics that we can factor for the most part. If they're factorable, we can factor them. Uh, we have a quadratic form. Okay, so there's a couple. Something like x squared minus 4. Factor x squared minus 4. It's a special pattern we've already familiarized ourselves with. That's the product of two polynomials. That's what I want you to do. Plus two x minus two, yeah. So you remember, there's a difference of two squares. That's another. That's a not a new one. This is just a reminder. We have already known about a difference of squares. Two squares. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. Well, that's pretty clear that it needs to be uh, that way because we need to not have a middle term. We need to not have an x term, which means that when we multiply these together, we need the x terms to be at exact opposites, to cancel each other out for them to be exact opposites. They'd have to have the exact same number, but just opposite, just one positive and one negative. And then if you're going to multiply those numbers together, then the result is going to have to be a perfect square. We've talked about it. That's why I'm not being as descriptive as I was the first time. But here's that we're going to expand it out to the difference of any two squares, even if it's not, say, a quadratic, like uh, 25 x squared minus 100. No, let's not do that, because they have a common factor. Um, 121.
six x cubed times six x cubed will give us thirty six x to the sixth plus five minus five. Okay. Look out for difference of squares. Difference of squares. Is this a difference of squares? Is it a difference? Yes. It's a subtraction. Are they squares? No. Are they some other kind of a thing like a square? What is a square number? <coughs> number times itself, you know, is this, this number, which we call the square. Are these numbers like squares? In what way? Yes? Um, they, they're terms by themselves three times. Right, what we call cubes, right? Squares, cubes. This is uh, clearly x times itself three times, minus what times itself three times? Three times itself three times. This is called a difference of cubes. Oh. Amy, what are you going to say? No, I got it. I was just confused. Oh. Now, difference of squares has a pattern. Right? If you have a squared minus b squared, it's acting as a plus b times a minus b. Right? This one's a little different. So here's how I remember the difference. Yeah, I don't really expect you to remember the difference in sum of squares. There is a sum of squares, or cubes, excuse me. Uh, this is a pattern, and here's how I remember it. If it's a difference of cubes, we're always going to factor it so that we have uh, two terms in this parentheses and then three terms in this parentheses. Okay? Uh, this one's going to be minus because, hey, it's a difference. That's what helps me remember. And then these three are all going to be positive. So here goes x and 3, the things that you're keeping. And first up here is the first thing that's being cubed, x. And you're going to square it there, x, x squared. So when you distribute, you do x times x squared, that gives you your x cubed. Next up is the two things multiplied together, 3 times x. And the last thing is that thing squared like we squared the x. So if we just simplify it ever so slightly, we get plus 9. If you look on, uh, I'm going to tell you a page right now, 354, 354, you can see the way the formula is referred to as a pattern for factoring any difference of cubes and any sum of cubes. Just to verify that this is the factor form, we'll multiply them together. x times x is x cubed. x times 3x is 3x squared. Uh, we don't want a 3x squared, so something must come up later in this, in this multiplication that we'll get rid of that 3x squared. So let's see. Uh, plus a 9x. Oh, so we got a 9x. We don't want a 9x. We just want x cubed and minus 27. So let's see what happens when we use the negative 3. That's minus 3x squared. Oh, that cancels out that 3x squared. That's good. Now moving on. Minus 9x. Oh, that cancels out that 9x. And negative 3 times 9. Negative 3 times 9 is that minus 27. Anytime you have something cubed minus something else cubed, you can do that. A minus B times A squared plus A times B plus B squared. It's just a matter of figuring out what two things do you have that are being cubed. So we have an x that's being cubed, then we have a 3 that's being cubed. Those are your a and your b. 
this case. This is your A, this is your B, and it becomes a simple substitution into this pattern. comes from, for me, I've memorized it over the years, but all you need to do is look it up. I'll have this on the, what is it going to be, the test, okay? I'll have that at, at the, on the front page of the test. You just need to be able to recognize that what I'm looking at is a difference of cubes and use the pattern correctly. So the way that I got this was this is a, right, x is a, so what does it say? a squared, that's x squared. And I'm supposed to do a times b. a is x and b is 3, so a times b, I switched it around to b times a because I like that order better. And then this is just b, whatever b is, less 3, squared, which is 9. Just filling in blanks. Same thing for, say, 8, 8, m to the sixth plus, now this is a sum of cubes, you can look on the same page, this is a sum of cubes pattern. It's very similar. Um, plus what? Plus 125. some term to get 8m to the 6th, and you can cube some number to get 125. It's just going to start you off here. We can write it as something cubed plus something cubed. We can use the sum of cubes back here. So what are we cubing? What would you put in here and cube to get 8m to the 6th? You can see this is your A, this is your B. Go crazy. Fill in that pattern. Okay. So if we follow our pattern, something cubed plus something cubed equals, well, fill in the blanks with A and B. Okay? Uh, so first is A, what's A? 2m squared. That's the first thing that's being cubed. 2m squared. Uh, you can see it's a plus, plus, b, b is 5, parentheses 1 is finished. Okay, now it's that first thing, that a, whatever a is, what's a? 2m squared. Now we're going to square that. We're going to square 2m squared. We're going to work this out to the side. 2m squared squared is going to be 4m to the fourth. Do that. Then we have a minus next. You can see that right there. A times B, that's B, that's A, so we'll do B times A, A times B, same thing. Uh, we get 10M squared, and the last thing is plus B, which is 5 squared, which is 25. First, we had quadratics. Then we had quadratic form, things that aren't degree two, but they are in quadratic form. Uh, we had a difference of squares, difference of cubes, sum of cubes. 
one last one, which we had actually already done before, factor by grouping. And the place we did factor by grouping already in our, in our experience was the AC method that we referred to earlier. Okay. It comes down to having four terms and uh, grouping them into two groups of two, looking for common factors in each group. Hopefully that sounds familiar. We'll go over it in a sec. I just want to uh, give you another way to identify, like, when do I might try to do each of these? We have here three terms. For a quadratic, that you might factor in the normal quadratic way, that will have three terms. All of these will have two terms. And this last one will have four terms. So let's see an example of factor by grouping. And again, it's, we've already done this, so that's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, let's do 22 together. 25 s to the third minus 100 s squared minus s plus 4. So remember, the factor by grouping, we've done that in the AC method. We grouped these two together, and we grouped these two together. Does anybody remember what we did after that? What we looked for? Factors that the two have in common, right? In this, in this first group of two, is there anything that they both have in common? What? What's that? Anything bigger than five? You have 25. 25, what about the s's, any s's in common? Two of them, s squared, that leaves us with s minus just a four. Now remember the thing about this method, we use the AC method, the factor by grouping. Uh, the parentheses need to come out to be identical, that was the key part of factoring by grouping. But Right now what we have is like, we can do one times negative s plus four. That's really close. Yeah, negative s plus four, but what we want is positive s minus four. What's that? Instead of a plus one, do a negative one. Minus one. Instead of plus one, do minus one. Okay. Well, then we need to change this to a positive this to a negative, so that when we multiply by that negative one, it comes out to be what it was to start with, negative s plus four. This is to be negative s, this is plus four. So now we've got the parentheses exactly the same, s minus four. And then s minus four times 25s squared minus one. Examples of more factored by grouping. Um, what you can see, the key is that these parentheses come out to be the same. First you group them, you look for things that you can pull out, fa common factors, among here, common monomials. Common monomial here was negative one. Get the parentheses to be exactly the same. There you go, there's one in that parentheses. We're factoring out this common factor of s minus four. It comes out here, and what we're left with is 25s squared minus one.
So uh, factoring by grouping, first part is we group them together, make sure to get that negative there as part of that second group. These have a 4c squared in common. So we get a c plus 2. And these two have a negative 9 in common. So we get a positive c plus 2 as well. That's really important that these two, these two uh, parentheses are identical. C plus 2 times 4c squared minus 9. But is that all the factoring that we can do? Well, we for sure can't factor this anymore. It's a degree 1. We can't factor degree 1 down anymore. But maybe we can factor this one. Does this one look like it's factored? They don't have anything in common. That's true. <coughs> what, we have, what kind of a number is 4? And, and 9 is also this kind of number. Squares? Difference? No squares? Uh, difference of squares. 2c plus 3, 2c minus 3. And for that matter, take a look at this one. S minus 4 is well, Square, square, square. 5s plus 1. 5s minus 1. Wow. That's great. Wow. Wait, I'm confused. You're Which confused? one's a 5? Oh, two. What's that? Which one's a 5? Is the first one a 5 or an S? Uh, 5s. You're making fun of five No, I'm not. That one. That's an S. That's an S. Then it's a 5s. Okay. I know my fives and essence look similar. I don't have to mock them. I feel like they shouldn't put those. What? They shouldn't put those together. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It's a close call. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, um, we won't get much of this done, but I am going to ask this question before we finish today. So all that is 5.4, but I also have this little thing, which I'm pretty proud of. I think it's pretty cool. So better pretend like you this. OK, so uh, in the next section, we're going to talk about this thing called long division of polynomials. And it always seems to confuse students without fail. I'd like to explain it in this way. I'm not just jumping in there and telling you, here's how you do long division, because people don't seem to understand what's going on. Makes sense. So let's make sense of it by looking at it in a different way. We're really asking the same question. So here's, here's the scenario. Here's the story behind this whole thing. So you find a scrap of paper on the ground. Okay? Somebody's done their homework. And uh, they, you know, they're supposed to factor this polynomial, and it looks like they did it. It looks like they found x plus 2 and some other factor that multiplied me this. And also, you'll notice, if you try to use factor by grouping on this, it's four terms long, so you would think maybe factor by grouping. It doesn't work. But it's still factorable. It still has another factor. So the question that we'll answer next time What's that other factor? We are, see, it's a little bit different because it's not just factor. It's factor with a factor already given. So we're trying to find another factor. And just to start you off, if you are, are like-minded with me and you like to, to think about this stuff and, and uh, mull over a problem, we can piece it together little by little. Uh, and here's the first thing we can do. We know we're going to multiply these two things. We're going to distribute these two things into this factor, right? Uh, so could you make a guess as what this first term might be? You know we're going to distribute this stuff into here and get this. Right? So, 
x squared, y x squared? 2x squared, why 2x squared? Uh, x times 2x squared needs to give 2x to the third, okay? So that, that gives us, because the next part of the thing is we're going to have to distribute that too. And then we're not going to be quite where we want to be. And so what we'll look at next time is, is the process we go through to kind of fix that problem. Okay? Thanks. Good class. Good job.